What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Great night of boxing in Atlanta, Georgia, the dirty south, the Hollywood of the south, man. Great night of boxing, man. Uh, Tank Davis stops Jokic Gamboa in the 12th round. Knocks him out. Referee uh, looks at uh, Jokic Gamboa and stops the fight after, he's, after he was knocked down three times, a total of three knockdowns by uh, Tank Davis. As he was, you know, as he said after the fight in the post-fight interview, he said it was about a C-plus performance, and uh, he was very accurate on that. It was a C-plus performance, man. I thought, uh, you know, uh, you know, Tank Davis was looking for one, the one punch, the, the one hit or quitter a little bit too much in this fight. He was loading up on a lot of punches instead of throwing his combination. He's a beautiful combination puncher. Got a beautiful uppercut, uh, good straight left. And he's a guy that uh, puts punches and bunches, man. But for some reason, he was headhunting and um, going for the uh, one-punch highlight reel type of knockout that he has had in his last couple of fights. But he got to understand that when you step up in competition, you're not fighting Hugo Diaz. You're not fighting Ricardo Nunez. You're fighting a guy that's a shot fighter in Yorkers Gamboa, but a guy that's very battle-tested, a guy that's a veteran fighter, and a guy that's, guy that's showed an unbelievable 10, man. I, you know, you know, in my prediction video, I thought uh, Gamboa would get knocked out in the third round because partly because he's reckless, very reckless, and um, I thought that would be his downfall. But he showed a good chin, very good chin, as he uh, he took a lot of big shots in this fight and did not go down. And um, I thought that kind of discouraged uh, Tank Davis yeah, as the fight went on, I guess he said, well, look, shit, I can't, you know, I hit this guy with everything. I don't do everything but the kitchen sink at this guy, and he's not going nowhere. <gasps> and uh, so he kind of, um, you know, with him coming in at the weigh-in of, what, one one pound, 1.2 pounds overweight, he came back a, a hour or two later and made weight. And that kind of uh, raised a lot of eyebrows, and uh, it kind of uh, raised my antennas up. Cause I was like, okay, you coming up, it's not like you. You could have said, well, uh, you know, if you was fighting at 130, you could say, well, it's time for me to move up. I've been fighting at this weight too long, this lower weight too long. My body's maturing. I need to move up. But you actually was moving up to a new, uh, to a, to another weight class, and you missed weight. So that that kind of uh, had the uh, alarm clock, the alarm clock uh, ringing in my uh, mind on just on that front. And uh, he kind of showed that he had stamina issues that you could tell uh, during the um, later rounds in the corner. He was, uh, you know, he had his mouth open. He was breathing real heavy, spitting his mouthpiece out. You could tell he was real tired as that fight went on. So he wasn't in the greatest of shape. Hopefully, it's a learning experience for uh, Tank Davis and he can get in a better shape. But as far as this performance go, man, he's going to have to uh, go back to uh, what he did in the Lynn Wash fight or what he did in the... Um, in the Jose Pedraza fight, man, he landed combination punches, straight rights, check left hooks. You know, he was going to the body, you know, and he kind of overwhelmed his uh, opponent with power, combination power punch instead of just, uh, like I said uh, earlier, just one punch looking for the highlight reel knockout. I thought that was his uh, part of, was his main problem tonight. Another thing he's going to have to do, he took some shots tonight. He took some shots, man. Even though uh, Gamboa really didn't have no legs after the probably the first four or five rounds, his legs were shot as he uh, he took the multiple shots and I think he hurt his foot uh, after the second round. He hurt his foot, man. He later he later said in the post fight uh, uh, interview that um, he he think he ruptured his Achilles. So you basically fighting a one legged fighter and you couldn't get him out of there, you know, until the twelfth round. Kind of reminded me of the Terence Crawford versus uh, Jose Benavidez fight. When he when uh, Crawford was fighting a one legged fighter and he finally got him out of there in the twelfth uh, round, so it was kind of similar in that regard. But a uh, good win for Tank Davis, man. I you know, I think his next fight is gonna be on pay per view. They, they they're trying to make uh, Javante Tank Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz. Maybe they go they probably gonna try to put that fight either in L A or Las Vegas. I think those are the two front runners for the to host that fight. And uh, he's going. I think he's going to probably be much sharper. He said another thing. He said that was interesting in the post fight interview. He said he think he can make one thirty five or one thirty. And I shook my head like, nah, you couldn't make one thirty five. You had problems making that weight. You need to stay at one thirty five, man. You know, you 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 know you you know you need to stay at one thirty five. You you, I, you know you was having problems making that. Now you gonna go back down five pounds? Stay at one thirty five. That's where all the top dogs at. That's where Tiafimo Lopez at. That's where Vasily Lomachenko at. It's better names there. There's nobody down there at one thirty for you. 
You know, if you want to go down and fight Leo Santa, Santa Cruz, that's one thing. But I advise you not to do that, you know, because of the weight issues. But that's the only get fight you need to be moving down to 130 for because all the top names are at 135. So we'll see what happens. But um, that is, that's the fight that's looking to take place. Now, based on uh, his performance tonight compared to Teofimo Lopez's performance, Teofimo Lopez put on a hell of a performance. He, um, you know, knocked out Richard Comey, a more accomplished fighter, a guy that's more fresher at his point at this point of his career than uh, Yorkers Gamboa, who was, you know, is faded, man, is shot, man. He just, you know, he's one of them guys, he, he relied on his athleticism and his, um, you know, his uh, fast hands and, um, and athleticism and fast hands and kind of being a little bit unorthodox. To win fights, but not as he's got older, he you know it's you know you you, just, you don't have those fast hands, and you know you, his a lot of his punches looked sloppy. He was leaning, he was um, he was almost falling over when he was throwing a lot of his punches, man. Just very sloppy, man. He don't have no technical skills to follow back on. Kind of remind me of uh, Roy Jones Jr. when uh, his uh, skills uh, eroded and he didn't have no technical skills to fall back on. You know, a guy like Bernard Hopkins was able to fight late in his career because he relied on technical technical skills. Even when he uh, hand speed slowed down, he lost a little bit of athleticism. He still was technically and fundamentally sound. He was still able to win high level fights, and that's what uh, then hurt uh, Yokos Gamboa uh, tonight, man. He, he to me, man, he need to retire. But he said in the post fight uh, interview that he wants to continue to fight at 135. So he's got a name, so he'll be able to get some good fights. That's a good name that you can put on your resume fighting somebody like Gamboa. So he's basically basically a gatekeeper at this stage of his career. As far as the uh, fight of the night, though, was uh, John Pascal versus Badu Jack. Man, great fight. Split decision. It was, it was a knockdown by each fighter. Great fight, man. Knocked down early by Pascal, lot knocked down late. The twelfth round by uh, Badu Jack almost had um, Pascal out of them, and uh, Pascal' uh, problem has been his whole career it was, it was in a uh, microcosm of his whole career in this fight here. Man, he waits too late to come on. Man, he always starts off slow. Start off slow in this fight. All three judges had him down six rounds to zero, even though I didn't have him down. I thought he won maybe one round, one or two rounds in the first six rounds, but it, you know, the the, the uh, it was obvious that. Um, you know, Pascal was ahead after the six rounds. You know, no matter how you had six, oh, five, one, four, two, he was ahead, and that was that's the problem with uh, Pascal. That's what's the problem with my bad with Badu Jack. Even though he came back in the second half of the fight, you know, you leave yourself. You almost got to be perfect down the stretch to win a decision. And if you, you know, and it was a couple of close rounds in the second half of the fight that could that I thought went to uh, Pascal, and uh, judges saw that also. And that's how he was able to uh, win a split decision over uh, Jack, man. But it was a great fight, man. Uh, Jack had the jab going. He was uh, going to the body good. He's one of those guys, he's just steady, 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 man. Don't, he, he's nothing flashy about it, but he just wears you down, man. It's just like, a, uh, just like rain hitting a rock. It hit that rock uh, so many days, so many weeks, so many months, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to put a dent even in a rock, you know, believe it or not. And that's what uh, Bado Jack did. He just keep pecking away, keep picking away, you know, throwing that jab, throwing the jab to the face, joint jab to the body, catching you with the straight right hand, catching you with the check left hook, you know, just steady jab right hand, jab right hand, jab to the body. Over, 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 and over again. And he just slowly breaks you down. And that's what he did with, um, with, uh, uh, What's up, boy? That uh, end up uh, almost died, man, when he fought uh, Vasek, the guy um, that was a light heavyweight champion. The fight, uh, the fight before um, Badu Jack fought when he fought Mark, uh, Marcus Brown and lost to him when he got that big ash in his forehead. The guy he fought before him, uh, Jordan Stevenson, Jordan Ste Jordan Stevenson, yeah, Jordan Stevenson. That same thing with Badu Jack. That fight, he came, started out slow, but he was able to break him down, and he he had a. Uh, Adonis Stevens in trouble in the second half of that fight, but Stevenson was able to rally and win still a round or two in the second half of the fight, and he was able to uh, walk away with a draw, and he was able to hold on to his belt. And that's the same thing happening in the Pascal fight, man. Um, Jack has got to uh, he's got to start off faster. Man. He's got to quit starting off slow. And that's what's costing him in these fights, man. That's what's costing him in these fights, man. But um, the first knockdown by uh, Pascal against uh, against Badu Jack, man, hit him with an overhand right hand, man, and uh, uh, Badu Jack did to Joe Frazier when Joe Frazier got knocked down by George Foreman, man. He was he was 
he got hit and he started running, running, man. Had his head started running like uh the house was on fire, or something, man. Like the arena was on fire. Like somebody in the crowd yelled fire. He started running. Like let me get up out of here. And um, <laughs> Pascal hit him with another shot in the back of the head and he went down, man. But luckily uh for Badu Jack, that knockdown was toward the end of the round. So when he got back up, it was hardly no time left. So he was able to survive that. The problem with um. Pascal, when he got knocked down, it was early in the 12th round. So it was like around about 2 minutes and 11 seconds left when he got knocked down. He got knocked down early, so he had to survive the onslaught. He did a good job, man. He was he was able to uh, grab and hold uh, Badu Jack. He was able to smother uh, Badu Jack punches, and he put, he did what veterans did, man. He was able to uh, hang on, man, and, uh, and that ended up uh, – Getting him to win, man. Getting him to split decision because he was he was just within an inch of getting knocked out in that fight. He was able to hold on, man. It was a very action fight, man, because the explosive punches were landed by uh, Pascal, but the steady pinpoint accuracy punches were landed by uh, Badu Jack, man. But it was a close fight, man. I had a 114-112 Badu Jack, but it was about three or four rounds that were swing rounds that could have went either way. So it was no robbery either way. Very, very fun, entertaining fight was the fight of the night. And it was good, man. The first fight of the night was, um, we're going to talk about the first fight of the night was Lionel Thompson, a guy that came out of Mayweather's gym, uh, TMT promotion. And the first time watching him fight, man, he's, he, you could tell he's been schooled in the Mayweather School of Boxing, man, because he came out in the, sh in the shoulder roll, shooting that jab out there, jab to the body, straight right hand. And he put on a beautiful uh, display against Ogotoski who uh, was coming off a uh, loss to uh, Kayla Plant. He was looking to rebound off that, man, but had a hard time cutting the uh, ring off. He's, he, he allowed Thompson to move around, escape out the side, though, and didn't do enough to win the fight. Towards the second half of the fight, he did put a little bit more pressure, and he did let his hands go a little bit more, and I thought he won some rounds. But in all in all, man, I thought the right guy won as he was able to win a unanimous decision. As this was, as this was his uh, Lionel Thompson first fight at super middleweight as he was coming down from light heavyweight. So he's a guy that was uh, came in with a record of 21-5. and five. Uh, You know, it's my first time watching him. So 21-5 uh, and five losses, you pretty much almost on journeyman status. But this win, he has uh, propelled his career, and maybe he gets a significant fight next. And uh, cause the 168 is uh right now is a is a is a glamour division. Got a lot of good fighters up there. Caleb Plant, uh you got David Benavidez, you got Yur Yurdon who's scheduled to fight Benavidez there. You still got Anthony Durrell campaigning at that weight. So it's a lot of good names out there. And uh, maybe Lionel Thompson can get one of those big names. Oh, you still got the uh uh the uh guy, uh what's the guy that beat um the guy with the dog collar. Uh, Spanish guy, uh, his, his game is escaping me, man. He beat, uh, he beat, he beat, uh, what's the boy from New York? Super middleweight from New York. The guy that got knocked out by Danny, Danny Jacobs in the first round. I can't remember his name. His name escaping me, but, uh, the, the Spanish guy, man, he's, he was, he was supposed to fight Caleb Plant, but I don't, I don't think the money was right on his, on his, on his end. So he didn't take the fight, and now uh, Caleb Plant is fighting some guy I never heard of in his hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. But I, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, uh, he was in a fight of the year with uh, the boy from Austin. Uh, what's the guy from Austin? Uh, he had retired for three or four years. He just had a fight about a year ago. But anyway, though, they got some good names at uh, Super Middleweight, so may, hopefully uh, Lionel Thompson will get a significant fight, though. But this is my uh, post-fight analysis on, the, on uh, the, the three fights on Showtime tonight. Good card, some great, great fights, and uh, a, a good, good, good way to end the year. A good bang at the end of the year for 2019, man. And uh, we got some more fights coming up in uh, 2020. We got um, we got Shields. She fighting uh, January 10th. She was at the fight. Looking all glamorous and things. She was at the fight. Uh, yeah, a lot of people at the fight. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal was there. Uh, Andre Berto was there. Floyd Mayweather Jr. was there. Um, uh, it, uh, uh, the safety Reed. Ed Reed was there. Hall of Famer. Ed Reed was there. Yeah, a lot of stars. There, a lot of celebrities that was there, man. It was, it was in full effect. Evander Holyfield was there. So they had a lot of stars in the crowd, man, and it was in the in the fight lived up to uh the status of the stars. It was star studded fights, a star studded it was star studded event, 
And it was a star-studded three fights tonight. So everything was on point tonight in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we move on to 2020. Like I said, you got Shields uh, in a grudge match against Habazin coming up January 10th. I'll probably break that fight down uh, in a couple of weeks as they got two weeks before that fight occurs. And then we got some more fights coming up leading up to Wilder Fury 2. And that's going to be a big fight, big fight, big super fight going on on Fox ESPN pay-per-view. And we'll, we'll be breaking that fight down. And uh, that'll be very interesting. As uh, Tyson Fury is already out here trying to play mind games, calling Wilder out, saying he's scared to do the media events with him to promote their rematch. He don't want to be in the same room with him. He's already trying to start the psychological warfare. But you know Deontay Wilder is one of the most strong-minded opponents, I mean, strong-minded people in boxes. So I don't think nothing that's going to work. But nevertheless, Fury is trying to get into his head because – because he did, uh, I think his mind games, now that I think about it, I think his mind games did kind of work on Wilder to a certain degree. All the trash talking, because Wilder wanted to knock him out so bad that he kind of was over swinging and uh, looking for the one hit or quitter punch, uh, one hit or quitter knockout. Instead of trying to set up the knockout, he was looping a lot of his punches. Since that fight, he's uh, been throwing that right hand more accurately, more straighter. So I think Fury did kind of get into his head a little bit as far as getting him a little bit too amped up going into that first fight. That along with him being his first pay-per-view, I think Wilder came into that fight too amped up. I don't think that's going to be the case in a rematch. But we'll see what happens, man. We'll be talking about it. I'm about to get up out of here, man. It's already a late Saturday night. I see you guys. Uh, subscribe to JB Sports. Uh, follow me on Twitter, JB Sports 713. Follow me on Instagram, JB Sports The Man. And, uh... Leave your comments in the comment section what you thought about these three fights tonight. This is JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I holla.